In this video, I will show you how to find the derivative of exponential functions. These are really cool because if you have a function y equals e to the x power, the derivative y prime is e to the x power. It doesn't change. How cool is that? So mostly you just have to watch out for the chain rule. So here we have another function inside the exponential function. So the outer function is this. And like I just showed you, the derivative of this is itself. But we have some stuff on the inside. So we've got this negative 8x, this inner function. And when there is an inner function, according to the chain rule, you have to multiply by the derivative of that. So that's just going to be negative 8. And probably we would put that in the front. So we'd get negative 8e to the negative 8x power. For number 40, get ready for the product rule and the chain rule. The product rule, because we can see this as the product of function x times the function e to the 4x power. So according to the product rule, first we take the derivative of the first function, which in this case is 1, and then we multiply by the other function left the way it is. And then we do a plus. And we go through again. The second time, we leave the first function alone. And we take the derivative of the second function. Uh, but the derivative of e to the something is still e to the something. The only ha thing you have to worry about is the chain rule. And because we do have this 4x on the inside, then we have to multiply by the derivative, the derivative of that. So we have to multiply by 4. Uh, let's, I should put a prime on this. So the best we can really do is just to write e to the 4x plus, uh, let's put this 4 in the front. So we will have 4x e to the 4x prime. Um, I see that we have this e to the 4x that is common to both terms. So very often, you will see that brought out outside of the parentheses, like this, e to the 4x times 1 plus 4x. So if this were a multiple choice question, this is probably the way you would see the answer. But if you have a free response question, you can leave it in either of the previous two forms. We will be starting with the product rule again. We can view this as x squared times e to the negative x power. So our product rule says that y prime will equal the derivative of the first part, which is 2x, times the second part left alone. So that is e to the negative x. Put a plus. Go through it again. The second time, leave the first function alone and multiply by the derivative of the second part. But the derivative of e to the something is e to the something. But because it's not just a plain x, we have to treat this as the chain rule and multiply by the derivative of what's inside, which in this case is, is just a negative one. But that negative does matter. So I might clean this up a tiny bit. So far, I just put the negative 1 here in the front. But we have this common factor of e to the negative x. So maybe we will bring that outside of parentheses. Maybe we'll factor it out. And we'll have e to the negative x times 2x minus x squared. Again, you're welcome to leave it as either of the previous two forms, but if it's a multiple choice question, it'll probably be this one. Here is one more form you might see. If we take that negative exponent and uh, drop 
e to the x power down to the denominator. It would look like this. Moving on to number 44, I'm going to change the form a tiny bit before we get started. This would be the same as g of t is equal to e to the negative 3 t to the negative 2 power. I'm just bringing the t squared out of the denominator. Let's get ready for the chain rule. First, the outer function. The derivative of e to the something is e to the something. But if there's something more than just x inside of there, we're going to have to do the chain rule. So we have this inner function, negative 3 t to the negative 2 power. So by the chain rule, we must now multiply by the derivative of this inner function. So power rule, the negative 2 will multiply by the negative 3 and make a positive 6. We reduce that power by 1, so that's the negative 3 power. So here is one form that your answer might take. I went ahead and dropped the t to the negative 2 power back to the denominator where it was at the beginning. And t to the negative 3 power, I dropped that down as well. For number 56, they are asking us to find an equation of the tangent line to the graph of f at the given point 0, 1. Whenever they ask me to find an equation of a line, I always like to use point-slope form because this tells me I need two things, a point and the slope. But in a way, we are already halfway done because they gave us the point. It's the point of tangency. So all we really need is the slope. So of course, in order to find the slope, we will find the derivative, which gives us the slope at any point, including this one. So we need to find the derivative of f of x, but we need to see this uh, by the chain rule. We have an outer function, which is e to the something, and then we have this inner function. But first we take the derivative of the outer function, and the derivative of e to the something is e to the something. That part doesn't change. But because we have this inner function, the chain rule says we need to multiply by the derivative of the inner function, which in this case is simply negative 2. So here's the derivative. Let's use it to find the slope at the point 0, 1. And specifically, we need to find the slope at an x value of 0. In other words, we are finding f prime at 0, substituting 0 in for x, we have negative 2 e to the negative 2 times 0 power. Well, this is just the 0 power, and anything to the 0 power is 1. So that makes this part of the expression become a 1, which we don't need to write any longer. So that means that f prime at 0 is negative 2. So that's the slope. All right, m equals negative 2. Now we are ready to write the equation of the tangent line using our point slope form. So we write y minus y1 is equal to the slope times x minus x1. And that's it. This is the equation of our tangent line. Let's do the same thing one more time for number 58. We need to find the derivative of this function so we can use it to find the slope so we can make the equation of the tangent line. Let's look at this as an outer function, which is e to the something. So we can do the chain rule. We will do y prime equals the derivative of the outer function is e to the something. All right, when you take the derivative of e to the something, it doesn't change. 
but we do have this inner function negative 2x plus x squared and because we have this inner function we need to now multiply by the derivative of this inner function so the derivative of negative 2x is just negative 2 and the derivative of x squared is 2x so this is the derivative we need to use it to find the slope at an x value of 2. This is a little cumbersome to write, trying to show that I'm evaluating y prime at an x value of x equals 2. This is the proper way to write that. Uh, it's a little easier when I have this notation, like f prime, because I can just um, stick the 2 inside of there. But there's nowhere for me to put the 2, so you have to put a vertical line and put x equals 2. Anyway, this means I need to substitute 2 for all of these x's. So that gives me all of this. We just have to evaluate. So let's see, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Uh, 2 squared is positive 4, so that's e to the 0 power. And remember, e to the 0 power is 1. So this is just going to be a 1. Meanwhile, we are multiplying by this. So we have negative 2 plus 4, which is positive 2. So this is 1 times 2, which is 2. So the slope is 2. Now we have a point and the slope. We are ready to write the equation of the tangent line. Using the uh, point-slope form, we say y minus y1 is equal to the slope, which is 2, times x minus x1. And there it is. This is the equation of our tangent line.